So welcome back. Um, in this last uh, video on the basics of, of data visualization, we're going to look at uh, XY relationships. So basically, when we're trying to understand the association uh, between two variables. I would say the real kind of uh, workhorse when it comes to these sorts of visualizations is, is the scatter plot, uh, which in base R can be done just by using the function plot, where you put in the x and the y coordinate. And that this plot function is, is fairly general. You know, it makes this sort of general xy scatter plot, but you can also use it uh, to plot lines and to plot time series and, and a lot of other similar plots. Um, where you have some x-axis, some continuous x-axis and some continuous y-axis uh, that is either a number or a, a date or time or something like that. Uh, and then the ggplot uh, equivalent of that, you know, you have to specify uh, the x and the y coordinates, the x and y columns as part of the aesthetic. And then here, since I'm making a scatter plot with points, I'm just using the, the geom point and you know, I can change the size and color and stuff like that. So this is our kind of most basic vanilla scatter plot, which helps us understand how two variables are related. Uh, but it's also pretty common to uh, be interested in not just two variables, but potentially how other uh, discrete or continuous or categorical covariates might also uh, you know affect the relationship of between two variables. So you know I might have um, you know, time series at multiple locations, where I might be interested in you know spatial patterns or temporal patterns, or I might have you know in, you know in this case we have an uh, uh, it's called an allometric relationship relationship between two the size of two parts of an organism, and they might be related you know to you know a third part or some other explanatory trait variable or something like that. Uh, so here's an example. Uh, of that where now we have uh, that overall data set now split up into uh, the, the male and female bird groups and I'm using color to distinguish between those uh, two groups. Um, I'm going to talk about color a little bit more in the next series of, of lectures that are going to cover kind of the, some of the, the more abstract visualization concepts, uh, but just want to make a, a point now uh, to encourage folks to use uh, color palettes that are sensitive to colorblind viewers, and also one that provides that provides strong and meaningful contrasts. Uh, the, the latter part is particularly uh, important if you're trying to use color to visualize any sort of continuous variable, uh, where you're breaking up, uh, you know, a color spectrum, and that there's a lot of uh, kind of classic. Uh, palettes out there like rainbow and stuff like that that are kind of notoriously bad at helping folks actually understand color gradients. Also at this point I want to say that in addition to using color uh, to distinguish between uh, groups you can also use the different symbol types. So instead of points you might use make one points in the you know, one circles the others x's or squares or triangles or upside down triangles. There's a whole range of, of symbol types that you can use uh, with an R. And in fact, you can use any, you know, any character on the keyboard can be a symbol type as well as a bunch of other uh, symbols. Um, that said, um, it's worth noting that it, in general, uh, most people are, are going to be less visually sensitive uh, to symbol type than they are to color. So unless you're colorblind, uh, like down to you know black and white, you know we're visually not more sensitive to color than we are to you know symbol shapes. It can be easier if you had the choice between the two uh, to start with color, but obviously you can easily run out of distinctive colors and need to add other as you know, other other ways of representing uh, distinctions between groups. Uh, another way we can distinguish between groups is using what are called facets, and and facet. It, the, the idea of faceting within figures is essentially to make you know, repeated plots for those different groups of data. And, and ggplot in particular is, uh, makes it very easy to make uh, you know, plots of, of groups uh, that are uh, you know, different categorical groups for, into different panels. 
And that, that can be helpful if you need to make a large number of panels. So like if I had, uh, you know, time series data from, you know, 100 plots, you know, I could facet those into 100 time series plots and look at all of them or look at a subset of them in a way where, you know, if I plot them all on one point, it, one plot, they could just all be overlapping and, and, and fairly indistinguishable. Uh, one disadvantage of facets is that uh, it can be harder to compare uh, information from one uh, panel to another panel. So it's always easier to compare information within a plot than across plots. Um, another thing we, that this figure shows is the idea of using symbol size to represent uh, some continuous variable. And that's you know, sometimes referred to as a bubble chart. And so here we can see that we're using uh, the size of the, the circle to represent skull size. Um, like uh, in the previous uh, slide where I was talking about that we're better at seeing color uh, than we are at shape, we're also much more sensitive to position uh, than we are to size. So, you know, while we can see, if you squint at this long enough, you can kind of see that there might be a bit of a gradient, you know, from you know, somewhat smaller dots uh, for smaller birds, particularly in the male, and somewhat larger dots uh, for larger sizes, uh, body sizes, and, and skull sizes. You know, nothing really, I would say when I look at these plots, nothing really jumps out at me in terms of those uh, skull size uh, relationships. Uh, by contrast, if we do what's called a, a pairs plot, which is to plot all pairwise combinations of variables, uh, this panel is what we were looking at before, again, but not with uh, color, uh, just with color, not with uh, any bubble size, you know, head length versus body mass. You know, we see a nice clear relationship, uh, but we can also see if we look at the relationship between head length and skull size, there's also, you know, a nice clear relationship, even potentially a clear relationship there. And so even though there's a very strong relationship between head length and skull size that we can see when we look at that plot by itself, uh, we don't, we didn't really, it didn't really jump out at us when we were looking at that, uh, when we were using uh, bubble size to represent uh, that aspect of the data. Um, so pairs plots are, are relatively easy to generate in base R uh, using the, the pairs function. You can just give it a matrix or a, a data table and it will make all pairwise plots within that table or, or matrix. Uh, and then within um, ggplot, the facet grid um, will uh, make that sort of uh, similar plots of pairwise combinations where you can specifically say, you know, what, what variables are going to go on the uh, rows versus columns. In this case, I think we, you know, you put the same variables on the rows as in the columns, and so it'll make all all combinations. Also worth noting when you do these sorts of pairs plots to remember that essentially the data shows up twice uh, for every combination because we have head length versus body mass here, but then we have body mass versus head length there, and it's really just the mirror image of the original data, which honestly I will find sometimes is surprising that you see things in the mirror image of a relationship that you don't see plotting it one way. I, we also see that the relationship between a variable and itself, the one on, on the diagonals, are perfect, which makes sense. So those aren't really particularly informative plots, but they just kind of show up uh, by, uh, by default. Uh, I find pairs plots uh, really, really valuable as a way of ex doing exploratory data analysis quickly. Um, that said, they also don't really scale well. So if you have large data and a large number of covariates, um, it can take you know, forever to render like, if I have you know, a million rows of data for like 100 variables, you know, that's you know, 100 by 100 plots with a million points in each, and it just becomes these tiny little you know, potion stamp plots, and you can't see anything. Uh, so when we end up with larger numbers of variables who are trying to understand the relationship between them, uh, what we often do is instead of plotting the raw data, we plot some summary statistic. And if you remember when we were talking about uh, summary statistics in the last series of lecture videos, that the statistic that we often use to understand the relationship between variables would be a covariance 
for a correlation, with the correlation being that covariance with the units normalized out. So here's an example of, of visualizing those correlations instead of visualizing uh, the actual scatter plots. So here it's, it's like a pairs plot, but instead of showing all our pairwise scatter plots, we're just showing the size of the correlation. So in here we've used uh, both color and size simultaneously to represent the same thing, which is the size of the correlation, which actually I find a, a, a nice visual because what we've done is we've made small correlations, those close to zero, uh, to be physically small. And then large correlations are large, but then we're using color to indicate uh, where those relationships are positive in the kind of the, the brownish orange color, and then when those relationships are negative in kind of the, the greenish blue colors. Uh, so that kind of wraps up uh, my discussion on, on the, the real basics of data visualization. Overall, you know, the goal here wasn't uh, to help you become an expert in all of these different types of visualization, but to kind of give you a, a feel for the palette of what's possible uh, in data visualization. And this is, again, even here, just scratching the surface for, to understand what's possible. And I find it often very helpful to have seen examples of different ways of visualizing things uh, and, and to kind of uh, think through how to creatively generate new visualizations of, of data. So next up, you know, in the next series of, of lecture videos, we're gonna kind of talk a little bit more about the principles uh, behind visualization. Thanks.